good afternoon on behalf of the sri lanka medical association let me welcome you to this monthly clinical meeting and this month it is with the sri lanka college of pulmonologists and uh, the topic for discussion today is the role of ebus guided bronchoscopy in interventional pulmonology the first speaker is dr tanuja tisera consultant chest physician nhrd valisara over to you dr tanuja oh, thank you very much sir for that kind introduction good afternoon i am dr tanuja tisera acting consultant thank chest physician you. from nhrd oh. First of all, I would like to thank uh, SLMA for giving this opportunity to present today. Respiratory medicine is a rapidly developing subspecialty, especially the field of interventional pulmonology. So EBUS or endobronchial ultrasound guided bronchoscopy uh, is a game changer in this field. Flexible bronchoscopy was invented in 1966 by Shigeto Ikeda, but uh, with this uh, flexible uh, bronchoscopy or standard bronchoscopy, we could only assess uh, endobronchial lesions, and we have uh, taken samples only from endobronchial lesions. However, ultrasonography was incorporated into the endoscope uh, and this was one of the biggest innovation in this uh, field. And uh, therefore we can assess lesions uh, which are outside the airways or uh, lesions which are too peripheral that we can't reach directly from the standard bronchoscope. So ultrasound first came to the Isovagas in 1993 as EUS, and then it came to the bronchoscope as EBUS. And um, this is very, um, uh, developed uh, interventional procedure and uh, uh, current guidelines uh, recommend uh, this uh, endobronchial ultrasound guided biopsies. And in Sri Lanka also we have this facility and currently it is available in uh, three centers, including NHRD. So um, there are two types of uh, EBUS guided bronchoscopic techniques. And before uh, going to my cases, uh, I will give a brief introduction about uh, these two types. So we have linear EBUS guided bronchoscopy and radial EBUS guided bronchoscopy. Linear EBUS is mainly to target more proximal lesions such as mediastinal or hyla, masses or lymph node. Whereas radial EBUS is to target more peripheral lesions that we can't reach with standard bronchoscope alone. And for linear EBUS, we have a dedicated bronchoscope, which is very expensive and uh, with uh, special needles. And for radial EBUS, we don't have a dedicated uh, bronchoscope. We have a radial probe and we use the standard bronchoscope uh, with the radial probe. And uh, we take samples under ultrasound and fluoroscopy guidance. So this is the image of uh, linear EBUS scope. And you can see there is an ultrasound tip uh, there's an ultrasound device attached to the tip of the scope. This is a bit bigger than the usual standard, uh, usual bronchoscope. And this is the radial probe with standard bronchoscope. This is, uh, uh, this is how we can uh, see uh, lymph node or uh, mediastinal masses we, uh, with uh, linear EBUS guided bronchoscope. And uh, you can see uh, the needle is inside the uh, lesion. So we can visualize the lesion directly with the ultrasound and we can take samples by looking at the lymph node. So we are taking real-time samples with linear EBUS guided bronchoscope, whereas with radial EBUS, we can't take real-time samples. And this is how we usually uh, uh, get the lesions with the radial EBUS scope. So now uh, I will discuss uh, two cases. Uh, that I have uh, done EBUS during my overseas training. And uh, case one, Mr. A, he's a 74-year-old male, active smoker with more than 50 pack year history, uh, ECOG zero. We have investigated for left upper lobe mass and initial bronchoscopic biopsies confirmed squamous cell carcinoma of the lung. This is his initial CT test. 
you can see there is a large left upper lobe uh, lesion uh, and it was uh, more than eight centimeter in size. And according to the TNM classification, we know uh, if the tumor size is more than seven centimeter, the T stage is T4 and there were no mediastinal lymph node uh, was detected uh, with uh, contra CT chest. Therefore, for staging purposes, we have done a PET scan. So you can see that uh, the PET, uh, PET scan also uh, shows a PET avid left upper lobe lesion. And uh, at the same time, there is marginally PET avid lymph node in the mediastinum. This is the left paratracheal area or 4L region. And then uh, again, this is the hyla region. Hyla region also there, there's mildly pet with lymph node. So it is very important to take samples from these lymph node because staging will be uh, 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 will be uh, staging will change according to the um, results of these lymph nodes and also the management. So. Uh, I will just uh, give a brief introduction about the uh, lymph node staging. So uh, according to TNM, we have uh, three types of lymph nodes, N1, N2, and N3. Suppose there's a tumor in the right side of the lung and uh, the hyalur lymph nodes uh, are uh, classified as N1 lymph node. And if there is any ipsilateral mediastinal lymph nodes like uh, paratracheal or subcarinal uh, lymph nodes, those are N2 nodes. And if there are any contralateral lymph nodes, those nodes will be N3. And it is very important to identify these lymph nodes. And suppose if there's a, a patient with lung cancer and positive N3 lymph node, then the minimum staging of that patient will be stage 3B. And we know for lung cancer, we can offer curative surgery uh, up to uh, stage 3A. So it is very important to identify these uh, lymph nodes. And uh, when we do the uh, lymph node sampling, uh, we usually start with uh, N3 nodes and then we go to the N2 and then to N1. This is because uh, we use only one needle and uh, there is a risk of needle contamination and falsely upgrading the uh, staging of the tumor. And uh, there is another scope uh, behind the trachea. So this structure is the esophagus and uh, this procedure known as EUSB, it is a procedure that we use the same EBA scope through the esophagus to identify mediastinal lymph node. So um, uh, there are several studies that have uh, found that uh, combined EBUS and EUSB for detection of N2 and N3 nodes will increase the sensitivity about 9%. So guideline recommend to uh, do both EBUS and EUSB to complete the staging. So moving back to my patient again. So uh, as I showed before, there is hyla lymph node. So this is an N1 node. And then there's a left paratracheal lymph node, and this is an N2 node. So if you look at the TNM classification, and uh, uh, so uh, T stage uh, is T4 because of the size. And then um, if uh, this patient has uh, in, uh, in one lymph nodes or no lymph nodes, then the staging will be 3A. So we can offer curative surgery for this patient. And uh, if this uh, N2 lymph node or the left paratracheal lymph node is malignant, then his staging will be stage 3B. Then uh, he is not a good patient for curative surgery. So we have discussed this patient in our lung cancer MDT. So recommended to do uh, uh, EBUS DBNA uh, sa uh, sampling from uh, station 7 and 4L, and uh, we have done that, and it was negative for malignant cells. So rediscuss again in lung cancer MDT, and uh, uh, we have confirmed as stage 3A disease and referred for left upper lobectomy and mediastinal node sampling. Following surgery, post-surgically, we have again uh, discussed the pathological staging, which confirmed our diagnosis, and it was uh, P, T4, and N1. And because of the tumor size and in one involvement, uh, he was further treated with adjuvant chemotherapy. Now, uh, second patient. 
uh, this is Mr. X, an 82 year old male ex smoker with more than 40 pack year history. Uh, his ECOG was one to two, and we have investigated for right lung mass. This is in the background of recurrent right-sided pleural effusion. Cytology showed only atypical cells. So he was treated with uh, indwelling pleural catheter IPC because of the atypical cells. And however, the pleural effusion resolved spontaneously and we removed the IPC. And after a few years, he again uh, presented with this new right lung mass. This is his CT chest. So you can see left lung is fairly all right, uh, but the right lung has patchy opacities from top to bottom. This is the right upper lobe. This is the anterior and posterior segment. And then this is uh, the right middle lobe and the lower lobe uh, bronchus. And uh, in the lower lobes, you can see more uh, consolidated changes, especially in this film. And airways are directly going to the lesion. So air bronchus sign is positive. And however, there were no mediastinal lymph node. So we have arranged uh, EBUS guided, uh, radial EBUS guided bronchoscopy for this patient because we could not take any samples with uh, standard bronchoscopy alone. EBUS, uh, radial EBUS guided bronchoscopy, the biopsy confirmed squamous cell carcinoma and uh, he, was, uh, he was also discussed in lung cancer MDT and referred for chemotherapy. So now I will uh, give much details about uh, EBUS guided bronchoscopy. So as I have mentioned, there are two types of EBUS guided bronchoscopic technique, linear and radial uh, EBUS. So uh, with linear EBUS, uh, we can uh, directly visualize the lymph node and then we can take real time samples and this is the needle and this is the lymph node. And with radial lebus, we can't take real time samples. We have to take samples under uh, ultrasound or uh, fluoroscopy. This is the linear ebus probe. You can see uh, at, the, uh, at the end of the scope, there is a, a ultrasound device. And in addition to the ultrasound in linear ebus, we have Doppler uh, facility because uh, we are dealing with mediastinal structures uh, and uh, there are a lot of uh, major vessels in the mediastinum. So uh, the uh, color Doppler will facilitate to identify major vessels from the uh, mediastinal masses or lymph nodes. This is the EBUS needle and there are several types of uh, EBUS needles and this is the needle that we use here. And uh, we need uh, training to handle the EBUS scope and needle. There are several steps that we have to follow while taking biopsies. This is very important because we need to uh, prevent scope damage as uh, these scopes are very uh, uh, expensive. So these are the main lymph node stations that are very important in lung cancer staging. And uh, when we do the EBUS, the lymph nodes are outside and the EBUS scope is within the airway. And then we can uh, target these lymph nodes and we can directly visualize these lymph nodes. So this is the uh, airway wall and this is the needle. So needle is pierced in the airway wall and the uh, lymph node. So you can see the same thing uh, with the ultrasound image as well. Uh, main indication for linear EBUS or USB uh, to diagnose and stage lung cancers and also to diagnose sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, mediastinal metastasis of extrathoracic tumors, lymphomas, and cyst. When to do staging, so there are uh, two uh, ways that we can uh, do the staging. One is targeted approach. Uh, when we do the CT scan or the PET scan, we, uh, we can identify pathologically enlarged lymph nodes and we can target those lymph nodes and can take samples. This is like hit and run approach and there's a um, risk of missing um, other lymph node. So the guidelines uh, recommend systematic staging. Uh, where we uh, visualize all the lymph nodes and uh, take samples if lymph nodes are enlarged. And uh, there are uh, some conditions uh, which uh, have high risk to develop N2 and N3 disease, even though the CT or PET scan uh, does, uh, 
uh, doesn't show any uh, enlarged lymph nodes. So those are uh, those conditions are like when the primary tumor is more than three centimeter, or there are any central tumors, or if the primary tumor is PET negative, or uh, when there's a tumor with N1 involvement. In these situations, the guideline recommend uh, to go to systematic staging because we need to identify the uh, patients who are su uh, suitable for uh, curative surgery. So what lymph node first? I have discussed this before. So we have to start with N3 and then to N2 and then for N1 nodes. Uh, there are important landmarks uh, that we have to know while doing EBUS. And uh, especially, um, uh, suppose there's a tumor in the right side of the lung. And uh, if there's enlarged 10R and 4R lymph nodes, uh, it is very important to differentiate these uh, lymph nodes. Uh, so 10R will be in one node because it's a hyalur node and 4R will be in two node. It's a mediastinal node. And these two nodes are separated only by, uh, only by a zygous vein. So it is very important to um, identify these uh, lymph nodes uh, by using the landmarks because uh, if, we, uh, uh, if we have taken samples from 10R and if we, uh, uh, if we, uh, take this node as 4R node, the staging uh, will be different. And there are several landmarks for EUSB as well. And EU EUSB, we can mainly target mediastinal nodes and we can't target uh, hyla nodes. Um, uh, ROS or rapid on-site cytological eval evaluation. So this is a technique that we use uh, while doing the uh, EBUS procedure. This is the on-site procedure. Uh, after taking EBUS TBNA, the pathologist, um, uh, at the same time, the pathologist uh, will look into the slides and uh, uh, will give, uh, uh, will um, let us know whether we have taken adequate amount, uh, uh, whether the sample is adequate. And uh, we do ROS mainly to, uh, to know uh, whether the sample is adequate, but there is added uh, benefit. Sometimes pathologists can see malignant cells at the same time. So um, if there's a patient with uh, uh, suspected lung cancer requiring urgent radiotherapy, then uh, we can uh, quickly refer uh, to the oncologist after doing NEBUS TBNA. Uh, EBUS is a very safe procedure and uh, complications can be due to uh, procedure itself or due to sedations. And we do EBUS under moderate conscious sedation. Uh, there is very minimum risk of bleeding and uh, pneumothorax. Uh, there can be uh, mediastinitis, but it's very, very uh, rare. Now we'll move to radial EBUS. So as uh, I have mentioned before, radial lebus is to target more peripheral lesions that we can't uh, uh, approach with the standard bronchoscopy alone. So uh, for radial lebus, we need to know about airway anatomy and we need to map the airways before uh, doing the procedure. So there's a book uh, written by Noriaki Kurimato regarding airway mapping. So suppose there's a lesion in this segment uh, this is a more peripheral lesion, and this is the standard bronchoscope, and we can't uh, push the standard uh, bronchoscope beyond this level. So there should be uh, some other uh, technique to reach this lesion. So that's how the radial EBUS came. So um, we can um, insert the radial probe through the biopsy outlet, and uh, then we can target this lesion. So to target this lesion, we have to map the airways. We should have a good uh, knowledge about airway anatomy. And uh, then we can uh, confirm, the, uh, confirm the lesion by looking at the ultrasound here and also uh, with the fluoroscopy. So after confirming the lesion, then we can uh, take the radial probe out and there is a guide sheet to uh, insert the biopsy forceps or brushes. So we take the radial probe out and then we insert the biopsy uh, forceps through the sheet. And uh, while doing this, we can uh, confirm that we are within the lesion uh, by looking at the fluoroscopy. And then we take biopsies. 
So complications uh, of radial lebus guided bronchoscopy. And it says uh, pneumothorax and the hemorrhage uh, risk is usually less than 1% compared to CT guided biopsies, uh, especially the pneumothorax risk is less. Uh, and um, uh, we take, uh, I mean, we do radial lebus to diagnose cancer. And those patients are usually having COPD with emphysema. So uh, when we do CT guided biopsy, there's a high risk of uh, getting pneumothorax with the background of emphysema. In that case, if we can reach through the bronchoscope, then the pneumothorax risk is less. Okay, uh, that concludes my presentation. And now I would like to invite Dr. Uh, Sampath and Dr. Heshini to start the MCQ session. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I am Dr. G.L.H.S. Lienegi, one of the senior registrars in respiratory medicine, currently working at uh, National Hospital of Sri Lanka. And uh, today I am tasked with uh, discussing a few questions on linear EBUS with you. So the first question, linear EBUS TBNA is not useful in evaluating Option A, sarcoidosis with mediastinal nodes. B, tuberculous lymphadenitis with mediastinal nodes. C, primary lung cancer with mediastinal nodes. D, peripheral, uh, peripheral lung nodule. So the answer for this question would be uh, option B, the peripheral lung nodules. So uh, with EBUS, linear EBUS, we can access mainly centrally located uh, lesions, uh, which are in the close vicinity of the trachea and uh, proximal uh, bronchial tree. So, uh, but the peripheral lung nodules uh, are difficult to access via uh, EBUS scope, which is uh, large, usually about 6.7 millimeters in diameter. Uh, so you can't access so this, those distal airways to sample uh, peripheral lung nodules. So we have to use alternative options such as uh, radial EBUS to diagnose peripheral lung nodules. Other options include image-guided biopsy, and surgical biopsies. So the second question, which of the following shows a linear EBUS needle? Uh, the answer would be A. So uh, picture A shows uh, uh, the EBUS needle, which is a sort of a complex structure with a stylet, handle, the depth adjuster, and sheath adjuster, and a needle lock. Uh, so it, it is easily distinguishable. Uh, picture B shows a, a bronchial brush, which is used in bronchoscopy. C shows a conventional uh, TBNA needle. And D shows a sheath that is used in radial lebus. Question three, which of the following lymph nodes cannot be sampled via linear ebus TBNA? A, station seven, that is subcarinal. B, station two, upper paratracheal. C, station six, paraortic. D, uh, station 10, that is hyla. So the answer for this question would be uh, option C, that is paraortic lymph nodes. As you can see in this picture, the EBUS, uh, we are approaching via the trachea, uh, a trachea, and so we can sample the lesions which are in proximity to trachea in the proximal bronchi. So according to this, uh, uh, as you can see in this picture, we can approach lymph nodes like 2, 4, 10, 11, and 12 with uh, re uh, linear EBUS. But uh, parabotic nodes are situated uh, away from the uh, uh, trachea. So it is out of reach from, of, of from the, uh, out of reach for the uh, linear EBUS TBNA approach. Four, which of the following lymph nodes can be sampled via USB? So uh, option A, 10, hyla. Option B, station 12, loba. Option C, uh, station 7, subcarinal. And option D is uh, station 6, that is paraortic. So answer for this question would be 
not uh, not seven that is subcarinal nodes so uh, again as in uh, ebus so we are approaching via esophagus so uh, the lymph node groups that are uh, in proximity to the esophagus can be sampled via usb so and uh, some lymph nodes are there which can be uh, accessed via both the uh, linear ebus as well as USB, so lymph, uh, lymph node stations like two, four, and seven can be accessed by both the EBUS and USB. Uh, then uh, groups, uh, lymph node groups like eight and nine, which are the paraesophageal and pulmonary ligament uh, lymph node station can be accessed via USB. So other than that, you can also visualize the, uh, structures like uh, the liver, so liver metastasis uh, can be visualized, and also you can see the liver adre left adrenal gland uh, metastasis, and you can even sample uh, uh, those uh, lesions as well. Uh, fifth question A patient has a left upper lobe adenocarcinoma of the lung with mediastinal lymphadenopathy. Which long lymph node uh, groups are you going to sample first? A left lower paratracheal nodes, that is 4L, B, right lower paratracheal nodes, that's 4R, C, uh, subcarinal nodes, that is group 7, and D, there is no specific code of sampling. So the correct answer for this uh, question is the option B, that is right lower paratracheal. Why is that? Because we are doing a sequential sampling. So lung cancer staging is based on uh, TNM classification. So when it comes to N classification, uh, we have N1, 2, and 3. So N3 classification usually uh, uh, corresponds to stage 3B so that the surgical options are out. So it is very important to get this uh, uh, nodal classification correct. So uh, if you start with N1 nodes, and go, uh, then move on to the N2 nodes and then move, moving on to the N3 nodes, there is a possibility of uh, cross-contamination because the EBUS needle is expensive and we are using one EBUS needle for uh, a single patient. So there is a chance of cross-contamination and it did inadvertent uh, upgrading of upstaging of the, uh, the malignancy, which can be detrimental in uh, the managing this patient. So in this question, there is the left upper lobe adenocarcinoma. So the N3, N3 uh, according to the given options, the N3 nodes are 4R. So sixth question, a 60 year old gentleman with a history of smoking was found to have a two centimeter adenocarcinoma T1M0 in the right upper lobe with mediastinal lymphadenopathy. What is the investigation of choice for staging? Uh, option A, linear EBUS and TBNA, B, mediastinoscopy, C, thoracotomy and nodal sampling, D, surgical resection of the lesion and lymph node sampling. Uh, the answer for this question is uh, option A, that is linear EBUS and TBNA. Uh, linear EBUS uh, and TBNA is a a minimally invasive procedure, which is done under moderate sedation. All the other options are actually done under general anesthesia. And there are several trials which have shown that the linear EBUS and TBNA is superior to mediastinoscopy when it comes to mediastinal staging of a, a malignancy, lung cancer. And uh, so, uh, so the option would be A. Question seven. Which of the following is true regarding ROS, that is a rapid downside uh, uh, evaluation? Option A, it ensures that the target lesion is sampled and minimizes the uh, need for repeat procedures. B, ROS adversely affects the number of aspiration. C, ROS significantly prolongs the procedure time. D, ROS increases the rate of peri and post procedure complications. Uh, the answer for this question is option A. That is, it ensures the target lesion is sampled and minimizes the need for repeat procedure. Of course, you don't have to have, uh, it's not a must to have a rapid downside uh, evaluation when you are doing EBUS, but if it is there, it's, it provides uh, several benefits. Uh, so uh, it actually reduces the uh, 
for uh, number of aspiration according to some studies and also it uh, sometimes it, it, it can shorten the procedure time as well and uh, it doesn't have any relationship of the on the it doesn't have any uh, it doesn't cause any increase in the rate of peri and post procedure complications so question 8 identify the lymph node and structures labeled a and b in the image uh, which was obtained when the scope is placed uh, just proximal to the main carina and nine o'clock position. A, four hour station with uh, superior vena cava and esophagus vein being A and B. B, four L station, aorta and pulmonary artery uh, B, being A and B. C, 10 hour uh, and left atrium and aorta being A and B. D, station seven, the, uh, left atrium and esophagus vein being A and B. So the answer for this question would be option B, that is foil station, A being aorta and B being pulmonary artery. So this shows that we, we have some several landmarks which we can use to guide our, uh, guide our, uh, to guide us and uh, to identify the structures sonographically. And also we can, in addition, we can use things like Doppler to identify the vascular structures as well. So question nine, this image was taken during a linear IBUS TBNA procedure. What is the structure within the lymph node indicated by the arrow? A, blood vessels, B, calcifications, C, needle, D, septations. The answer for this question would be option C, that is needle. So in uh, linear IBUS, uh, we actually uh, uh, see in real time uh, what is happening. So we can see the needle in real time when we are, uh, when we are taking samples uh, from the lymph node. Uh, but in radial IBUS, it doesn't happen. And uh, furthermore, we can, uh, we can also see the uh, sonographic uh, sort of sonographic features, like if the, if the nodes are more than one centimeter in short axis, if they are discrete and oval in shape with heterogeneous architecture and central, uh, central necrosis, then they are more suggestive of a malignant lymph node rather than a benign lymph node. On the other hand, if the node is homogeneous and if there are septations, then it is more towards a benign lesion. So question 10, a 30-year-old lady Presenting with mediastinal lymphadenopathy and tender lumps in lower limbs was found to have non caseating granulomas in EBUS TBNA. What is the most probable diagnosis? A. Primary lung carcinoma, B. Tuberculosis, C. Sarcoidosis, and D. Lymphoma. So the answer would be C. Sarcoidosis. Uh, so actually, uh, non caseating granulomas can occur in either of these conditions that can even occur in tuberculosis, uh, lung malignancies, lymphomas, fungal infections, and many, uh, many, uh, many uh, conditions. And also if it is tuberculosis, we can also send samples for uh, TB cultures and gene expert as well, with, uh, which increases the uh, sort of uh, uh, the diagnostic uh, accuracy. And uh, uh, this, question shows that not only in the malignancies, but even in other inflammatory conditions, infective conditions, EBUS can be very useful. Thank you very much. And I would like to thank uh, Sri Lanka Medical Association for giving me this opportunity. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Heshini De Silva, and I'm a senior registrar in respiratory medicine uh, attached to National Hospital of Respiratory Diseases, Valisera. Uh, so I will be continuing the MCQ session, and uh, the predominant focus of my MCQs will be on uh, radial EBUS. Uh, so moving on to the first uh, question, uh, which of the following is false regarding radial EBUS? Uh, radial EBUS has a rotating mechanical ultrasound transducer. Uh, two, radial EBUS does not guide real-time samples. Three, 
Radial EBUS uses Doppler to identify blood vessels. Radial EBUS allows tissue penetration of four to five centimeters. So the answer for this question is number three, that is that radial EBUS uses Doppler to identify blood vessels. Uh, so it's only linear EBUS uh, that has the facility of using Doppler to identify blood vessels. Uh, when considering the other, uh, the other answers, uh, so radial EBUS uses a ultrasound transducer, which is a rotating mechanical transducer. And uh, unlike in linear EBUS, uh, radial EBUS does not let us take real-time samples because the ultrasound probe needs to be removed and then the uh, biopsy probe is inserted afterwards. Uh, so moving on to the second question, which of the following is not a use of radial EBUS? Uh, the answer one is assessment of airways. Answer two, to guide uh, TBLB or transbronchial lung biopsy. Answer three, uh, to diagnose peripheral lung lesions. And answer four, for assessment of pleural lesions. So the answer for this is answer four, that is for assessment of pleural lesions. And uh, radial EBUS cannot be used uh, to diagnose pleural lesions uh, because it gives a, a circumferential uh, ultrasound image it's used for the assessment of airways and uh, you can visualize the layers of the airways as well. Apart from that, it also guides uh, transbronchial uh, lung biopsy and uh, the main use of radial EBUS is for the diagnosis of peripheral lung lesions, uh, which cannot be approached from the conventional bronchoscope. Uh, so the third question is, which of the following is true regarding radial EBUS and linear EBUS? The first answer is, Linear EBUS and radial EBUS have dedicated scopes. The second answer, radial EBUS transducer can be introduced via conventional fiber optic bronchoscopy. The third one, linear EBUS and radial EBUS permits real-time TBNA or transbronchial needle aspiration. The fourth answer is linear EBUS and radial EBUS require general anesthesia. So considering these statements, the answer that is true is the second one. Uh, that is that radial EBUS transducer can be introduced via a conventional fiber optic bronchoscope. So like we mentioned previously, uh, linear EBUS has a, a separate dedicated scope. However, radial EBUS scope needs to be used in conjunction with a normal bronchoscope. And uh, Although linear EBUS permits real-time TBNA, uh, radial EBUS does not uh, uh, allow us that uh, uh, facility. Apart from that, uh, linear EBUS and radial EBUS both are procedures which are done under conscious sedation, and uh, it does not require general anesthesia. So moving on to the fourth question. Uh, radial EBUS provides an ultrasound image of uh, one, 360 degrees, two, 180 degrees, three, 60 degrees, four, 45 degrees, and five, 90 degrees. So the answer for this is 360 degrees. Uh, so if you see uh, the first image, image A, that is a linear ebuscope, and you can see that the ultrasound transducer provides an image uh, of 60 degrees only. Uh, the second image, uh, image B, is the radial uh, ebuscope, and because it's a rotating uh, ultrasound transducer, it provides an image uh, of 360 degrees, which gives us a circumferential view of the airway. Uh, the next question, the highest diagnostic yield is seen when the radial ebuscope is uh, one within the lesion, uh, two, adjacent to the lesion, three, outside the lesion, or four, on top of the lesion. So considering this question, the answer to this question is uh, that the highest diagnostic yield is seen when the radial ebuscope is within the lesion. So as seen in this first picture, uh, the lesion is uh, seen in red and the radial ebuscope has to be uh, placed within the lesion. And uh, when this uh, proper localization is achieved, 
the diagnostic yield uh, increases to more than 80%. Whereas if there is a poor localization of the lesion, that is if uh, the radial EBA scope is adjacent to the lesion rather than within the lesion, uh, then the diagnostic yield has a reduction and uh, a positive rate of only 30 to 40%. So this is why it's important to properly localize the uh, lesion uh, and uh, to do that to uh, make sure that it is uh, localized within the lesion. Uh, so the next question is, which image shows a properly positioned radial EBUS probe within the lesion to maximize diagnostic yield. So of these images, it's the first image which shows uh, the properly positioned radial EBA score. As you can see, you can see a, uh, a lesion uh, with a proper border and uh, it is uh, concentrically placed around the probe. And uh, this appearance is called a uh, snowstorm appearance. And if you can see, uh, uh, the answer number four, in this, uh, the radial ebuscope is not properly positioned and uh, it's an eccentrically placed uh, scope. Uh, so moving on to the next question, uh, radial ebus cannot be used for uh, one, diagnosis of sarcoidosis, uh, two, diagnosis of lung malignancy, three, staging of lung malignancy, and four, diagnosis of peripheral lung lesions. So the answer for this question is number three, that is staging of lung malignancy. So although linear EBUS can be used uh, for diagnosis as well as staging uh, purposes, radial EBUS can only be used for diagnostic purposes. Uh, question eight. When comparing radial EBUS with CT-guided biopsy, which of the following is false? Answer one, diagnostic yield of radial EBUS for malignant lesions is more than 70%. Answer two, post-procedure pneumothorax is seen in 5% of patients following radial EBUS. Answer three, post-procedure bleeding is less common in radial EBUS. And answer four, radial EBUS has less exposure to radiation. So considering this question, the correct answer is answer two. Uh, that is that post-procedure pneumothorax is seen in 5% of patients following radial EBUS. Uh, so comparing uh, CT-guided biopsy and radial EBUS, uh, CT-guided biopsy has a higher diagnostic yield than radial EBUS. However, radial EBUS has a much lower rate of complications, such as pneumothorax and bleeding. So the rate of pneumothorax following radial EBUS is less than 1%, uh, whereas the rate of pneumothorax in a CT-guided biopsy is about 10 to 20%. Apart from that, uh, radial EBUS also has less exposure to radiation uh, than CT-guided biopsy. Uh, so question number nine, uh, the diagnostic yield is increased in radial EBUS in which of the following? Answer one is pulmonary lesions with the air bronchus sign. Uh, answer two, uh, lesions located adjacent to the bronchus. Answer three, uh, if the lesion diameter is more than 20 millimeters. Or answer four, all of the above. Uh, so the correct answer for this is answer four, that is all of the above. So these are all factors that need uh, that increase the diagnostic yield of radial EBUS. Uh, so larger uh, lesions have an increased uh, diagnostic yield. And if you look at this image, uh, this image clearly shows the R bronchus sign. So you can see the peripheral lung lesion and the CT image shows that the uh, airway is clearly uh, going into the lesion. And if a lesion like this is identified, we know that this is a lesion which can be properly uh, sampled by a radial EBUS. Uh, so question number 10, the following are false regarding radial EBUS used with the guide sheet. Answer one, increases post-procedure bleeding. Answer two, functions as an extended working channel beyond the reach of the bronchoscope. And answer three, 
facilitates convenient transfer of devices for repeated sampling. And answer four, decreases procedure time. Uh, so considering this question about radial EBUS used in conjunction with guide sheet, the answer that is wrong is answer number one, that is increases post-procedure breed. Uh, so as mentioned previously, uh, the guide sheet, radial EBUS can be used with a guide sheet or without one. And uh, when it is used with a guide sheet, uh, it provides us some additional advantages, mainly that it uh, works as an extended working channel and we can reach samples uh, which cannot be conventionally reached by a normal bronchoscope. Apart from that, uh, because of the guide sheet, uh, it also reduces the risk of first procedure bleeding. Uh, and because the guide sheet uh, provides proper localization of the lesion, uh, you can uh, first identify the lesion using the uh, radial EBA scope and then leave the guide sheet, then take the radial EBA scope out and then use your uh, normal biopsy needles uh, to uh, take the sample. And uh, because of the guide sheet, this also decreases the procedure time. So uh, this is my last question. Uh, so which is true regarding radial EBUS used in conjunction with fluoroscopy? Uh, the first answer is uh, provides a better localization of the lesion. Uh, the second answer improves diagnostic yield. Uh, the third answer reduces complications. And the fourth one, all of the above. So the answer for this is all of the above. Uh, and so radial EBUS uh, can be used in conjunction with fluoroscopy. And uh, because radial EBUS does not allow us to take real-time samples when it is used with flu fluoroscopy, uh, it provides better localization, improves the diagnostic yield. And because we are sure of the uh, positioning, it reduces complications as well. Right. Thank you very much. May I just invite uh, all the speakers to take their seats on the stage, please? Any questions from the solitary member in the audience or from Anyone who is uh, coming via Zoom. Okay, so can I just ask you now, uh, these uh, interventional procedures, uh, they are mainly for diagnosis. Uh, is there any place for endobronchial resection of the small lesions like uh, adenomas and so on? Thank you very much sir, for asking that question. But with uh, radial labors, this is mainly for diagnosis of uh, diagnosis of the disease and staging. But uh, we have other uh, procedures like debulking, and uh, we can use uh, APC or we can use cryoprobe to debulk the disease. Those are like therapeutic options. Uh, but uh, otherwise, with uh, EBUS, uh, it is mainly for diagnosis and staging. Right. And this uh, radial EBUS transducer, the one which you pass through the uh, bronchoscope, is it a reusable device or is it uh, officially a single use device? Uh, radial probe is reusable, but right. uh, there is a, a set, of, I mean, there is a number of uh, procedures that we can do. Right. Uh, but uh, the guide sheet and the uh, guide sheet comes with the uh, uh, biopsy forcep and a brush, and those are single use. Right. That is even in uh, Sri Lanka, they are single use, right? You can't uh, sort of uh, use, uh, you know, you can't uh, disinfect and reuse it. We reuse right. it. Okay. Ideally, okay. Single. Compared to X biopsy and then uh, media stand copper biopsy, what about the cost? So, uh, if we take um, media stenoscopy for lymph node sampling, so uh, lead EBUS is a minimal, uh, minimally invasive procedure, and we do it under conscious sedation. Uh, but uh, there is a cost for the needle, 
but otherwise uh, when you compare it with uh, media stenoscopy uh, we have to do it under conscious sedation we need theater time so compared to that uh, linear ebus i think uh, much cost effective and uh, good for the patient as well because it's minimally invasive right so it's actually cheaper yes. in the absence of any other comments let me uh, thank the three speakers dr tanuja tisera dr eshini di silva and uh, dr lianage for uh, excellent uh, brief presentations which were very clear thank you and uh, may i also hand over uh, these letters to them